I had heard that they did some porn here. They did some what here? They brought a porn in here, filmed it while they were open. But from what I've heard on the streets is people know- While they were open? How is this even possible? There's windows. It's a strip mall. There's, there's people parking that can look inside. What's up guys, it's your boy Alan again, back with another video, and today we're going to watch another episode of Bar Rescue. But before we start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and uh, let's go check this out. So here we are, Park 77. Look at the outside of it. It's a weird sign that they have, it almost looks... Yeah, it looks like a discount store or something. Like, if it didn't say bar, I wouldn't even know that this place was a bar. Look at the exterior, it looks like an office, if anything. Look at the outdoor deck they have. It's though. huge. It's, it's, I mean, that could be a gold mine, but look, there's nobody there. Oh my god. A giant patio like this in San Francisco. I don't understand why. <laughs> like the other episode where we had the San Mateo bar, Mandalo Lounge, also had a giant unused area, even though the bar was so small. This outdoor patio is bigger than some bars. Like, why is it empty? Look at the chair sitting <laughs> in the middle of the lawn over there. And there's no logic. Why, why is there lawn chairs just with no table? It, you're just gonna sit and watch people chill at the patio? Why would you put the lawn chair just sitting there for no reason? It doesn't make any sense. And uh, San Francisco State University is literally a half a mile down the street. About 30,000 students. There's not a single college kid in here. There's not... <sighs> So I'm pretty familiar with this area, the San Francisco State area. There's not a lot of bars. There's one bar that's inside the campus, but it closes at 9. Uh, as of today, it may have been different when this was filmed. So where the heck are the college students? Why aren't they going to this bar? It's literally walking distance. So this bar is owned by four people. Wayne and Tano are brothers. Brothers, of course. Family. People always run this stuff with their family. Like I said before, okay, if you have experience, if your brother has experience, if your partner has experience, if your friends have experience, yes, you can open a bar together. But most of the time, this is not the case. Most of the time, you have these relatives, you know, people who know each other, think it's a fun idea to open a bar. But it's not like in the 70s. You can't just open a bar on a whim. You need to have experience. Things are way more specialized and specific now than they are before. There's permits, there's laws, there's uh, certifications that you need, you know, especially with liquor laws. These things, if you don't have any experience, you could get in a lot of trouble. So you need to hire people with experience and not just any experience. It has to be relevant experience. Wayne has two sons, Angelo and Tommy. So not only are these two brothers working here, they're employing their own children. This is a recipe for disaster. Angelo runs this bar day to day. Woo! He's our GM. Okay. Wayne is in here. Of course, he's drinking on the job. And I understand Wayne and Tano haven't spoken to each other in a long time about this bar. Tano doesn't think Angelo is competent, but Angelo is Wayne's son, so he sticks up for him. See, this is the problem. It's just nepotism. It's very hard to fire somebody who's your partner's or your brother's son. You think you're doing them a favor by hiring them, but you're not because you're sacrificing your own business for this. And if your business closes because your relatives and friends are not competent, that person's gonna lose their job too. So in the long run, you're not really helping them. So this is Park Merced, mm -hmm. California, your neck of the woods. This is my neck of the woods. This is where I did a lot of business. Do you know anything about this bar? No. I, I mean, besides, uh, you know... It's funny, like, I have a lot of friends who went to SF State, and I've actually lived near here as well, and I actually have never heard of this place, and I don't even think my friends who went to SF State have heard of this place as well. Do you know anything about this bar? No. I, I mean, besides, uh, you know, I had heard that they did some porn here. They... What? They did... Porn inside the bar? They did some what here? A porn. A porn. A porn. They brought a porn in here, filmed it while they were open. But from what I've heard on the streets is people know this bar. While they were open? How is this even possible? They're... They have... There's... 
There, there's windows on the. It's a strip mall. There's, there's people parking that can look inside while they're open. Or for the fact that the porn was filmed here, it actually drew away a lot of customers as well. I want to see if we can find out about it. If it's out. So the locals actually know about it and that actually hurt the business. Why would you film a porn in your bar? Why would you do that? Like, why? I don't understand why, like, especially now that they got this reputation that they can't recover from. Like, would you want to go to a bar that had a f porn filmed in it? Okay, let's see if we can find it online. Look what I found in 30 seconds. So basically they're having sex on the couch now. Disgusting. Are you kidding me? They actually found the porn that was filmed in this bar. That's uh, Angela. This freaking Angela. Standing around watching it. He's in? There's a bartender that's in there in the background? What? They... So they actually were opened. And you, you have the GM who was in the background of this porn that was being filmed inside of this bar. How did they not have their liquor license taken away? How did this happen? I've had enough. There's the freaking couch. Oh, yeah. they, they actually use the couch that's inside the bar. They didn't even like use one just for the porn and then just took it out. How old is this? How's this place still open? They actually used the furniture in the bar for this porn and it's still there. It's not even like rented. They didn't even rent the couch. They actually used the one that's the customer sit on. I've never ever met anybody who would shoot a porn movie in an open bar in front of customers and employees. Nope, not at all. Well, no way. I knew that they said it was filmed when they were opened, but they have customers in there? This is in a strip mall, there's windows, like anyone could have looked inside. And this is like a residential area. I would have at least gotten rid of the couch. And you notice there's no women here? No. Yeah, why did they keep the couch if they use it for a porno? That's just, how is this? This is the GM. The GM saw this happen and he decided to keep this couch? To get the customer perspective, John sends two spies into Park 77 a 4,500 square foot space, featuring a bar, four pool tables, and a large outdoor patio. This place is huge, especially for a San Francisco bar. I mean, four pool tables and a huge patio, and it's right next to a college. How is this place failing? If this porn couch incident was involved in this the lack of business, that has to be one of the dumbest decisions ever made. Because this place, it's a gold mine. It has the right bones, right logistics, right location. Now, I can't believe that this gym would agreed to do something like this, which ruined their reputation and whatever future that this place could have had. Can I have a margarita? Margarita? Yeah. Mai Tai. The Mai Tai is actually invented here in Oakland, so you should know how to make a Mai Tai. Yep. so there's uh, two debated stories of where the origin of uh, the Mai Tai came from. One was in the East Bay, you know, Oakland with the Trader Vic's. The other story was from the Don the Beachcomber in SoCal. After some legal dispute, it was determined that Trader Vic's in Oakland was the first place to have the Mai Tai. So yeah, they better not screw this drink up because this drink was invented in the San Francisco Bay Area. And they also better not screw up the margarita because the best margarita in the world right now is considered in Tommy's Mexican restaurant, which is also in San Francisco. So these two drinks, they better not screw up. And that was Pineapple juice doesn't go into Mai Tai. Uh, she said it like she was so proud that, yeah, pineapple juice does not go into Mai Tai. Mai Tai is uh, rum, lime, orjat, which is an almond syrup, triple sec or Cointreau, and that's it. There's no pineapple juice. Um, oh, got some red. Automatically know it's wrong. And there's no grenadine. Huh. She just randomly putting tiki ingredients into this drink. Probably just made it up off the top of her head. Oh, she hates the Mai Tai. I mean... Yeah, there's no citrus, so it's probably too sweet. On top of being incorrect. Oh, man. He's gonna sit on that couch. Really, like, does that couch need to be there, especially when it's been used in that way? This couch is like the centerpiece of this bar. It's disgusting. Yeah. Ah! 
What, what shot do you like? Now he's going to try to give them a shot. Cheers to you guys. You know there's a drink in this for him somewhere. So he just giving away shots to any pretty girl that walks by. I mean, this is a young dude, but why did you put him as a GM in a college area? Like, what do you think he was going to do? Not that it's an excuse, but at the same time, what did the owners expect? Oh, there it is. There it is. How many drinks has he had? I mean, he yeah, he seems a little uh, tipsy. Definitely three sheets in the wind. He's been drinking multiple shots with the customers. He's pouring himself pretty hefty shots. I got you. I'm not going to ring it up. I got you, bro. And he's drinking. Yeah. And he's... He just indiscriminately giving away free drinks. He even said that he's not gonna ring it in. And this is the GM. Wait, right in front of his brother. Mm -hmm. Right in front of his uncle. Absolutely. They don't seem to care. Nobody seems to care about yeah. it. So they see it going on and they're not doing anything. They're like on their phone. So this is probably not new. They've probably gotten used to him giving away free shots. For them, they don't even see it as a problem. I got you on the shot, bro. I got you. Have you seen one cash exchange between no, anybody? You want a shot? I got you, brother. Dude, he is so drunk, he's not bringing anything in. And the owners are right there. How come they're not saying anything? Like, why are they even there? I mean, this guy is drunk, but those other two seem they're fine. They're just not paying attention while he's throwing money away, giving away free drinks. No. The last two shots, did you open a tab already? No, I got him. I got him. Yeah, yeah, I got him. Woo! How you feeling? So you have a bartender that's reprimanding the GM. Are you kidding me? I'm feeling good. Wow, this guy's an idiot, huh? Oh, God. Being a drunk What, he broke glass in the well? Now, this is... This guy needs to be sent home. He's just way, way too drunk. This is a liability. What are they doing? They're just messing with him. Can you imagine going to a bar and this is the how the GM is acting? How the other employees are treating him, embarrassing him? He's basically a clown for their entertainment. When the guests see this, what kind of authority do you think they would see? I wouldn't even have thought that this guy was an employee at all. Let's do this! To be honest with you, I've never seen a bartender right. or owner act like Angela. There were drinks spilled. This guy is beyond wasted. How come the other owners are not sending him home? This is a huge liability. Like he could get hurt, he could get someone else hurt, he could hurt somebody on his, you know, hopefully he's not driving. This is embarrassing. It was complete chaos. I felt really uncomfortable. So look at this, Tano and Tommy just let Angelo do whatever the hell he wants. Woo! Get out of here. This guy is making a fool out of himself. Can you imagine? This is before TikTok and all that stuff. But if you take into consideration on when this was filmed, this could have likely been on Yelp. Get out of here, dude. Get your shirt back on. You're out of your mind. And they're going to blame it on him. But they're standing there and letting him do it. Yeah. Let's go grab our drinks at the couch. No. Don't go to the couch. No, don't. Wait, wait, wait. Here, come to the couch. Come to the couch. All right, let's go to the couch. Don't sit! Don't sit! Yeah, right. Oh, oh man, you're... He sat on the couch. And the GM encouraged the girls to sit on the couch. And he knows, because he was there when they filmed this thing! You're on the couch, Russ. All right, last shot. Last shot! Last shot before we go, we turn it up. It's disgusting. Last shot before it turns it up. So what, He's this is just the beginning. Is that what he's saying before he drinks even more? Uh, do you know who you are? I'm Angelo. How many drinks have you had tonight? Seven to 10. Seven to 10. Seven to 10. And this is probably underestimating it because most people who are drunk tend to underestimate how much they've had, which most likely means he drank more than that while he's on the clock. And how many do you have ever had? Seven to ten. This is the way you normally are? Yeah. Come with me for a minute. All right. So he, know, he this is how he drinks every shift. How are the other owners allowing him to do this? 
and they are right there. They can see this. Tell them what happened on this couch. Oh my God. Girls, I want you to see this. Now I want you to know I would normally not show this to you, but I want you to see this. You have got to be kidding me. He's gonna show them the porn. This jerk shot a porn movie on that couch. That's absolutely disgusting. So what? So what? Look at you. So what? He doesn't think, what is wrong with him? Does he have any social calibration? He doesn't realize what's, there's anything wrong with that. What is wrong with him? You want to sit there? <laughs> and you wonder why you're such a loser. Oh my god. Dude, he's not even registering anything that he's saying. Look at him. He's like just too wasted to understand what's going on. Can you talk? No. No, you can't talk. Can you think? Maybe. What can you do other than make a porn movie? I can help people have a good time. Really? Yeah. Did you guys have a good Dude, you're just giving away free shots. They are not having a good time. They're just not turning down free drinks. That's not the same thing as having a good time. It's That's disgusting. This is the epitome of your failure. You drunken <laughs> fool. You. Oh my god. Oh my god. What is he doing? He just stuffed his face, just motorboat of that couch that had the porno filmed on. You have got to be kidding me. Go do it again. <laughs> oh, what is wrong with him? Why are the other ones just letting this happen? This man is the epitome of a real moron. Do it again. Oh my God. Oh my God. I can't believe they even... Uh, the other owners were right there, and they're allowing him to make a fool out of himself in public like this. And they're wondering why this bar is failing. You're his big brother, what do you do about it? Do you know how many drinks he gave away tonight and never rang one up? Disrespects people, embarrasses your family, correct? And what do you do about it? Nothing. What? Why do they let him do this? Like, if my brother acted a fool like that, I'll beat the crap out of him. And this guy is sullying the family name and they're doing nothing about it. How are they gonna call me like that? The suicide. shot. Good night guys, I want nothing. <sighs> they need to send him home before he hurts himself. Why is he still behind the bar? How, why isn't anyone stopping him? Do with this. You're gonna do shots after that? Stop. Angela, sit down. Dude, at this point, you should force the drink out of his hand. They just let him drink another drink. Like, this is a huge, huge, huge liability, and they're his family. They should be concerned about his well-being and his health if he's drink like this every day. Mr. Taffer, we're really trying to change here, and we really need you. Get if you can't control him, then how can I? You're his family. They don't know what to do. But you're perpetuating it. You watched him drink tonight, and you didn't. Okay, how about this? Fire him. Don't let him behind the bar. Like, he can't control himself. I'm sitting here with 50% ownership in this business. He has 25% ownership, and he's pulling you down. And his father has the other 25 and protects him. It's my dad and him against Tom and I. Uh, where is the dad in all this? The brothers should be concerned about they're just letting him drink himself to a stupor, making a fool out of himself. And change, and you don't have control over this in the morning. I won't come back. But we'll take care of it. I'm embarrassed, and I feel like it's part of my fault. I could have done more, but I just hope John comes back. We need him. Partially your fault. You're one of the owners. It's all of your faults. You're allowing this to happen, and you're there. You had a chance to stop it, and you didn't. Junior, take the couch, throw it out the door. That piece of out of here. Throwing that couch out that door feels so good. This is it. This is the turning point. Why didn't they get rid of it before? You know, it has a bad reputation. You don't even have to replace it. Just get rid of it. How hard was that? 
Dude, you gotta control yourself or we're gonna lose the best opportunity to help us. You need to rein it in. Can you do that? I'll try. I wanna hear a yes. Yes, I will rein it in. Dude, he's not gonna remember any of this. Just send him home and then talk about it the next morning when he's sobered up. Oh, I just smell him. Just don't care. I was just putting my face on the couch. Last night was really pathetic. Angelo embarrassed himself, embarrassed his own family. Angelo. Dude, this guy should be sent to the hospital. This is beyond drunk. This is alcohol poisoning. Like, he's throwing up into a freaking trash can in the daytime? Tano and Tommy aren't doing anything to control Angelo. Wayne owns 25% of this business, and he's Angelo's father. Can we pull everybody together? Where's Angelo? Dude, this guy is probably still drunk. If he's throwing up in the trash can outside the bar in the daytime, he needs to sleep it off. She's probably not sobered up yet. Angelo, do you remember meeting me? Vaguely. What do you remember? I remember just trying to show the customers a good time. Do you remember sleeping in a bar? <sighs> Jeez, they didn't even send him home. He slept overnight at the bar. So I'm gonna assume that's the same clothes that he wore the night before. Probably reeks of beer and barf. My dad protects him because he's his younger son. You haven't grown up, man. And you think daddy's going to keep protecting you, are you? That's a, that's a difficult question. Wayne. This, this kid is a grown man. How much can you baby him? It's not helping him to, if you're allowing him to act like this. I'm surprised they're not beating the crap out of him for acting this way. Because everyone's money is on the line. Remember, they're all owners. What I saw last night, father to father, was an embarrassment. I want you to see this. I don't even look at it. There's no way that this is the first time you've seen him act like this. Alcohol abuse is a progressive thing. He's not just out of a sudden, out of nowhere, drinking like this. He had to have seen some warning signs before this. He's a child in a candy store. I mean, a year ago, he shoots a porn movie in here. You know about this? I didn't really know anything about the porn. How he doesn't know about it. The brothers knew about it, and the dad doesn't know about it. So he just did this behind his back? So this was not authorized, I assume. Shoots it on a couch that's in this room. In the video is your son. Oh my. Customers in the room at the time. Your business. It's a nightmare. This is insane. How, why didn't they fire him for this? Like he just did this on his own. He thought this was a good idea. You can't freaking control yourself, can you? We got paid for it. Who else you want me to say? What's done is done. You got paid for, but the reputation got damaged because of it. How much did he get paid? You think that's worth getting a lifetime blacklist from the college students? The reason why they're not here is because of that couch. You're so pathetic, I can't even scream at you. Why are you calling me pathetic? Are you making money? No. I've already taken two jobs up to support my family. The business has debt. Two jobs. He's one of the owners, and he has to work other jobs to support this place. 188,000 debt. So who signs for that debt? My father. You put them in business and you expect them to make this a positive thing. Absolutely. Hopefully they succeed and make something of themselves. This is why you don't run, you don't open a business with your family because you're blinded by your love and care. You don't realize that your children are not competent to run a business. And not only that, one of them is beyond incompetent. It's one thing to be not competent. 
where you know you just lose money or you break even. But he has done something that will forever scar this place. And even if the other bartenders, you know, other owners are competent, like that alone would have have destroyed all that hard work. Tommy, has this been a positive thing? Um, not really. We need some direction. We're, we're all going in a different direction. It's really tough dealing with family. If he wasn't family... Yeah, <laughs> we've seen this many, many times in Bar Rescue. How come people haven't figured this out? This is the last three days. You poured $16,000 worth of liquor, gave away $7,500 worth. I mean, this is not surprising, but the numbers just makes it, I mean, it just confirms what we saw earlier. Based on a single weekend, your loss was $7,539. That's $360,000 a year. This... A third of a million. Like, it's one thing to not make money. You're losing money on something that you have control over. This is entirely the GM's fault. He's giving away this much. He is the main cause of why this business is failing. And this is why like, you don't hire your children to run a bar, especially the youngest one. Why would you put him as a GM? Knowing that he can't control himself when he's near alcohol. There's no way that you could not have seen this coming. You got a problem. What are you gonna do about it? I'm gonna change. I don't believe him for a heartbeat. Test me. He's gonna be tested. <laughs> I mean, this guy is still drunk. I think we would all like to see him change, but he would have to clean up his act. It's not gonna be that easy to change overnight like that. If he doesn't stop, he's no longer working here. And he walks away with his 25% for nothing. If he gets fired, his stock should revert back to you. You have one drink in this business. They take the keys away, and you own nothing. Yeah, like, I don't even think he put any money into getting that 25%, you know, whatever part ownership that he has. And yeah, if he didn't put any money into this, then yeah, if they fire him, they should not give those shares back because, I mean, it was not his to begin with. The way that a Mai Tai is, it's supposed to come out an amber hue and it came out red. See, when people don't know how to make drinks like a Mai Tai, it just ends up being like rum, grenadine, and juice. You're supposed to get the flavor of the rum. So. Yeah, like the Mai Tai, it might have juice in it, but it's supposed to be somewhat of a spirit for drink. There's actually a lot of alcohol. Like a proper Mai Tai, you should be able to taste the rum. That is the main ingredient. There might be the lime, the orjat, the triple sec, but in the end, like the rum should, you, can still, you should still be able to taste the rum in it. Oh, Tommy, let me get you guys back here and make me a Mai Tai, just because I want to see where you guys are at with it, okay? Okay, come on, guys. Cause see, the thing about that is you never want to use the glass going in the ice like that. But... I can't believe he just did that. Right off the bat. It's uh, even before the Mai Tai was even attempted. He already violated a health code. So in case you don't know, you can't scoop ice with glass because if the glass chips from the impact on the ice, you can't see it. And the only thing you can do is to burn the ice, wipe it clean, putting new ice in it because you don't know if there's broken glass inside that ice. Remember how we talked about the red thing, so I automatically- Yeah, we already talked about this earlier. It shouldn't be red. It should be brown, like a amber hue. Somebody put grenadine or something again. Nancy cocktail? Yeah, we got that Mai Tai, we got strawberry daiquiri. I'm taking Mai Tai. Oh no, we, go, we don't have a cocktail, sir. We gotta come up to the bar and grab it. Are you pouring him in? So why is he on the floor if he's not... What is his role? So no cocktail server. So they're not able to order drinks on the floor and have somebody pick it up. I mean, look at that bar. Like, not having a cocktail server, having everyone bum rush the bar like that, it's a lose-lose situation for everyone. The guests have to stand up for a long period of time. Bartenders are gonna get overwhelmed. I can see that drinks are gonna get mixed up, especially when you have this many people ordering drinks at the same time. Because when you have a drink ticket, at least you can, you know, see where everything goes. In a place this big, with no cocktail server, no POS system, this thing is like not set up for success. Yep, no? Now. Okay, so you're off on your line. You're gonna have to redo those. <laughs> Every 
Yeah, you know, like I said, if everyone's piling up to the bar, multiple of the same drinks are ordered, you're gonna get lost. You don't even know where things are supposed to go because you have so many people, so many different drinks. And of course, the guests, because they I'm sure a lot of them haven't been here before. You give them a drink, they're not gonna know what the Mai Tai is gonna look like. They're not gonna know what the strawberry daiquiri is gonna look like. So even the guests don't even know which drinks are theirs. Tell me who doesn't have drinks? Look at him. Let's go, rock out, man. Let's go. Angelo, you pour out of the metal, not the glass. Does anyone here have any bartending experience? You have one bartender scooping ice with a glass, and now you have the GM who isn't even straining out of the metal tin. How did, why did they even give him the role of a GM? This makes no sense. He's the youngest brother, and he doesn't even know bartending basics. This is a stress test. But this is the way it is on a Friday night, right? He yeah. should be able to do this three nights a week. Hey, Angelo, how's the floor doing, though? I'm gonna go check on that right yeah. now. You got a whole... Yeah, I thought he was supposed to be on the floor. Why is he behind the bar? I don't see anybody ringing any money. Have they ringing up any money? Oh my god, this again? They're so overwhelmed with making drinks, they're forgetting to ring it in. We've seen this happen before. The whole point of making drinks is money. If you're not going to ring anything in, you might as well just not make the drinks at all. Oh, there's a register over here. Oh, there's a register over here. I'm going to guess 30% of the drinks crossing the bar, they're not collecting money for. Angelo, do you realize that a lot of the money has not been run through the drop drawer? Okay, earlier um, the GM didn't ring anything, but now we realize that this problem of not ringing drinks is across the board. All the bartenders are guilty of this. This is not good. These bartenders are not used to being fast. They're forgetting to take the money. I wonder what's going on out in the patio. This patio is all. Why is this place empty? Look how packed that bar was earlier. They're not letting people know that there's a patio in the back. It's completely underutilized. And having people outside would definitely relieve some of the pressure on the bartenders. Because when you're outside waiting like that, it will help them relieve the pressure of not having the bar being so packed. This is a huge asset, especially in San Francisco where there's not a lot of bars that have this much area, not only indoors, but outdoors as well. Oh. There's no reason to be out here. There's no comfortable seating. There's no fire pits, no warm lighting. And the worst... No fire pits. Yeah, San Francisco gets pretty cold, especially in the San Francisco state area. They don't have heat. That's probably why nobody's outside, because it's freezing. Where do these go? These guys and these girls. These girls right here. Oh, God. Are you guys ringing up money? I'm just asking you. You got to ring up drinks. Don't help him. All right. Uh so even after being reminded to ring up drinks, they're still not ringing them in. Are they just getting like tunnel vision that they can't hear what anyone else is saying? They're just so focused on making the drinks, they forget why they're making the drinks, which is money. Okay guys, we're in that situation again where every single staff member's behind the bar. And there's no glasses. Angelo! Angelo! Why is the GM behind the bar making drinks when there's all this empty glassware that's lying around. I've mentioned this so many times. <laughs> it seems like I'm being like a broken record over here, right? The most important job, if you are overwhelmed, is to start bussing. Because if you don't have dirty glasses to wash, then you don't have clean glasses to make drinks out of. So now they're they're out of glasses and the dirty glasses are an eyesore. Like, why is he behind the bar? He's supposed to be on the floor. That was, he was instructed to be on the floor. The GM should be busting these glasses because it doesn't look like they have any bar backs. So he has to make the executive decision to, you know, back the bar by busting the glasses. That's one of the most important jobs is to bust the glasses so he can wash them. Okay, so she's out of glasses. Is it's because you haven't been keeping track of what's on out there. I'm going out so there. now you're at a standstill. You got to do it. Get out there. Oh uh, yeah, I need limes and extra strawberries. How is this guy a GM? He doesn't even seem to have any bartending experience. Like, you should visually see the dirty glasses all over the bar and on the tables. Like for me, I've been conditioned so much that when I see an empty glass, it's almost offensive that it's even there. And you just gotta take it out of the way as soon as possible. Where's Angelo? We need more lime. Angelo! Angelo! Look at you guys! I mean, it's good that he's drinking water instead of alcohol, but still, like, you gotta be focused. Don't just randomly chug water while you're on the floor. You have to be at a standstill. You've already gotten to one standstill already. What the f are you gonna do? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
quarter. Now that I see Angelo sober, I can't call him a drunk at the moment, but I can still call him a terrible manager. Angelo, I literally just gave you a list of all the things your bartenders needed, and you didn't damn do it. Just take your time and do it right. He's going back to his comfort zone, which is being behind a bar. But as we saw earlier, he doesn't know the bartending basics. It's almost like an ostrich sticking his head under the dirt. He knows that the bar is in trouble. He knows that they need glasses. He knows that there's dirty glasses on the floor that needs to be bust and washed. He knows they're out of garnishes. He knows that they're low on ice, but he's not facing the problems. He's just going back to his comfort zone. You know, that's not what a leader does. Bar wasn't ready, no limes are set up. About 15, 20% of our transactions had no money. $200,000 on the line, and you put your money on the wrong guy. He's not gonna succeed like this. And I can't change that in three days. Yeah, I still don't know why they put the youngest brother as the GM. That makes no sense. Somebody who's hungry needs to be behind that bar and running it like a business. Angelo, it's hard to argue with John that you've been here for three and a half years. Your foresight of the bar business. He's been here for three and a half years. If I didn't know him better, he's been here for less than six months. Three and a half years as a GM, and he hasn't learned anything. Three and a half years is plenty enough time to learn how to manage a bar. Plenty enough time to learn how to bust dirty glasses, get ice, cut garnishes. You ready, Sid? Yeah. You ready? Yep. Yes. All right, here we go. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Love it. Yeah, I love it. Oh, look at the one. <laughs> Yeah, way better sign. The other one didn't even mean anything. Looks like they got some fire pits as well. Ready to see the inside? Yeah. yeah. Go. There goes that. All right. Let's do it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah, this is way better use of the area. Earlier they had the couch in the middle of the bar, which didn't have a good reputation, but now the seating is well put and it's a huge dance floor in the middle. This is way more organized than before. Beautiful. It's gotta make us money, keep the family together, and keep on moving on. Whoa! Wow. That's cool. So they put ping pong tables on the outside. Earlier they had nothing on the outside, and now there's actually a reason to be outside. Obviously I wanted to create interaction and fun out here. So having the ping pong tables, the beer pong, this is a play area. Oh cool, they have, <laughs> in addition to the ping pong tables, they actually have beer pong tables as well. Smart move, this is definitely gonna attract the college crowd. All of this only works if we pump out drinks. Let me show you what I did in the bar. I got you three. Revention POS terminals. I got you a light. Yeah, those POS terminals, like I said earlier, they didn't have any, so it just forced everybody to go to the bar to order drinks. But having a POS system, now you can actually take the drink orders on the floor, you know, with the cocktail servers, and sends it to the bartenders to the service well, and then you can see an itemized list of exactly what you make and where it's supposed to go. So rather than making like 20 different drinks just pile up in front of each bartender that you have no idea, you forgot where they're supposed to go, the POS system is definitely gonna make it way more organized. Okay, boys and girls, pick it up because now you got a busy bar. You need anything? Just get on that side. <laughs> Look how much more full the outside is compared to the original concept. They literally just doubled the size of the bar by using that area. By putting those ping pong and beer pong tables outside. Also, the heaters help a lot, obviously. Hey, if you enjoyed that, don't forget to check out these other videos as well. And please leave on the comment section on what videos I should react to next. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one.